Wow. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing investment opportunities in Nollywood. And uh, please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 I mean, Chuku uh, Kaitis, well, let me come to peace because. <laughs> Peaceful peace, peaceful peace, please. Peaceful peace, please. Peaceful peace, 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 peace,
descriptions or mm. jobs in um, Nollywood. And I think yeah. writing is one of the most vital um, jobs. Everybody's important, but you know what I mean. If you don't have a good story, then uh, maybe there, there, there's, there's going to be a problem from beginning to end. And the conversation was basically about how writers are not being paid enough. Okay. Like someone who would come out to say, I mean, this is hypothetically speaking, that I wrote the Omoghetto and you're saying, oh, what I earned was um, 200K or 500,000 Naira. And they're not happy about it. And they feel like because they're not properly compensated and given, again, enough time to research and write, they end up coming out with mediocre, mediocre scripts. So in your capacity and your experience, is there something that's being done in that space to at least ensure that we have better storytelling? If you, if you want to tell a story that cuts across or you just want to go really indigenous for our people, that is proper told and remuneration as yeah. well mm. the one thing i always say to young writers these days is they have the opportunity of joining the script writers guild and for the first time that, that particular guild has one of the top writers in nigeria as the president yinka ogu yinka is one of the most experienced writers you know um tinsel you name it yinka has been there so if you're a young writer and you want to be mentored then Yinka is one of the people you should be looking at. Um, Tunde Baba Lola. There's so many of them in Kiru and Joko. One of the things is that everybody believes that they're too big. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, so can Ch Chukuka, can you just come in there while Peace is trying to sort out her, her camera? I mean, just, just randomly, I think that information asymmetry is a big problem in this market because... A lot of people, a very few people have the information, but they're not sharing the knowledge. And so a lot of people are not really doing the best that they could do because they just don't know, right? So mm. right now, all these Netflix is being done. Yes, Netflix is saying don't tell other people what you got and stuff like that. But that's really more of a divide and conquer strategy on their part, right? Mm. They don't want you to know that this person got X or Y. Right now, Nigeria is at close to the bottom of the pay scale for SVOD platforms, including Netflix. They're mm. not paying Nigerian as much as they're paying South Africans wow. or Moroccans. And I'm not sure that it's just a function of the quality of the film. I think that we've gone ahead and, uh, and done um, ourselves. Uh, top, top standard. We've created precedent. We're doing substandard, substandard deals, not the movie. Yeah, not the movie, the yeah. Substandard in mm -hmm. terms of the economic, right? Yeah. And you've gone at, you know, in the in the days when, uh, if you remember, uh, the likes of uh, DSTV did the same thing to the industry. They were yes. paying people for a three-year-old movie or more. You got three thousand, uh, no, one thousand. If it was less than, if it was two years old, two thousand. If it was recent, three thousand. We did that to ourselves because everybody was dying to be on DSTV. Mm. Today, everybody is dying to be on, D uh, on Netflix. Netflix. If we could just hold off our content and say, you know what, screw you guys, we're going to re restructure these deals and reassess the, the rate, we will probably get better. That's mm. one thing. The other thing is people don't understand that Netflix and these companies, they're data companies. When, Genevieve, when the news of Genevieve getting that $3.3 .3 million came out, what did Nigerian Twitter do? Oh my God, how can you give her $3 million? It's too much. Movies in Nigeria have been done for 100K, 200K. All that analytics was picked up. It's okay. Since these people don't need all this money, now let any Nigerian go and try and collect the same uh, $3 million from them and see whether you will smell that. Exactly. So, you know, all these things are connected. Um, the other thing that uh, was mentioned earlier, IMDB needs to be cleaned up. There are too many lies there. Mm. Back in the day, they used to call it packaging. So what they would do is, in the days of EJ, I'm sorry to use EJ as an example, but it's the one that comes to mind. When EJ first came out, I was curious to know how much they spent on the movie. So I went to look at IMDb, which is the internet movie database where you get all the information on all films. I wanted to know, I was building a model, so I wanted to know budget versus actual. If these guys made, I don't know, 200, 300 million box office, then it was, let's say, a million dollars. How much did they spend? Well, when I went to IMDb, it said $2 million. I called Film House. I called a couple of people. I finally got to the producer, and I heard that, no, I didn't spend $2 million. But don't you know it's packaging? You can't be, you can't be not saying that you're doing million-dollar movies. So a lot of people have, I spent a million dollars. I spent $2 million. Then when people like us who, who know mathematics and live on the numbers mm -hmm. decide to say, okay, you spent $1 million in today's world, 
uh, I don't know what. Um, That's about five hundred million. <laughs> I mean, but even if it's... numbers you guys threw out are interesting, people are doing should be doing dollar returns because mm. even when you say that this new um, film has done more than uh, wedding party, wedding party, it really hasn't. But in dollar terms, the twenty sixteen naira was maybe. 280 mm. or less. Absolutely. So that number is probably something like um, 1.3 or something. The new no the, the numbers you're comparing, if you do it in dollar terms, my point is, it's still less than when Bec you the yeah, be yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, because of the inflation. Yeah. A lot, right? So all those things also matter. All this, all this information, it matters, especially if you're going to be expecting people to come and drop, you know, millions of dollars in your sector. And hmm. um, some of the other areas we didn't talk about that needs money, equipment rental. We need, given the number of productions that are coming, we don't have enough quality equipment hmm. at that level and enough of it for the productions that are coming. So there's definitely clear investments there. And really, with equipment rental, by the time you rent your red camera for the third or fourth time, it's probably paid for itself. Hmm. And it can probably shoot a bunch more movies. So. It's, it's a sort of 18-month return profile type thing. Hmm. And you can price in dollars because people are finding cameras from London and putting London insurance on it before it comes. Hmm. Um, the other one, I think, is on the VFX service and animation service. I think that those two are clear areas where there isn't, there's not a lot of known um, uh, quality uh, uh, servicing locally. And so the few players that are there are good investments because anything they do will likely do very well, especially on a cost basis. Absolutely. So those are some of the things I like. The last thing is on the ecosystem, there's a need for people to mentor, you know, um, find a mentor and mentor people and, and let people grow and develop. In America, when you want to, if you wanted to set up a business like uh, Airbnb today, right, you could go to a website, SlideShare, and you look up the very presentation that Airbnb did when they raised money the first time, when they just got out of school. Yeah. Where are the proposals that, and I don't want to mention anybody's names, but the big and the great titans in the industry, where are the proposals that they've done to go and raise money for their film, to go and raise money? People always think that, oh, if I keep all the knowledge, then it's only me that will do all the films. There's mm. nothing like that, right? Mm. Because the industry is too freaking big. And there's so many... You know, there's a gazillion stories. Charles, you are, you, are you are sound, you see, you are talking like Rico, you're not Nigerian, you're not in Nigeria. Oh, he, oh he's very Nigerian. <laughs> no, because well, this is what, I mean, what he's saying is exactly yeah. the problem we have. It is. You know, that, you know, what and someone it, like, someone like Kunla Falanya will tell you, we've not even scratched the surface. Because, because the sky are, is too big enough. Too and much. Charles, I wanted, before you even um, finalize on that, because of, I want to talk about stories, Right. Because something, again, keeps irking me when I see some of these movies, and I'm not even interested to go to the cinemas to watch it, right? Because the original, we have amazing stories from Africa. You know, how come um, investors are not looking to tell some kinds of original stories that are very unique to us, that is not looking like we're rep repetitive with our, with our storylines? Is it that the investor is afraid that he might not get his money back, the return on investment? No, but it's not investors driving stories. At the end of the day, no. you know, the, the, the story... Well, first of all, I think there's a narrative out there that says this 0 .00, and it's... I don't know how many zeros before the 1% of people that have money and go to weddings and big parties and all this stuff. Those stories, to me, um, are not as interesting as... For instance, I'd be really curious, you know, when I saw, when I saw Milkmaid, I was so blown away because... That's a story that is obviously so, you know, it, it surrounds us. I mean, every day we know that somebody is getting kidnapped by Boko Haram. And that. Yet nobody told any meaningful story about it until Desmond did that job, right? Mm. Um, I still want to know how come, if, what is the makeup of these Ethiopians and why is it that they were never colonized in film, right? In film, how did they, you know, survive, you know, beating all these, you know, empires and keeping safe? I would love a documentary series that follows all those children, you know, al Jarees or what do they call them? al mm -hmm. I want that their story to be told. How can you become a professional beggar? Mm. 70 years, 50 years. Mm. It's kind of weird. And then it's you hear about this stories. double life they are living, that some of them, you know, own a car and a business, but it, it makes money for them. That There's so many stories to be told. 
even until we told um, uh, when our King of Boys was so well received, right? And mm. why was it so well received? Because Lagos is a city no different from um, you've got uh, uh, City of God that came out of Brazil. Mm. You had uh, Bigua River that came out of uh, uh, where was that? Uh, I think that was Congo. Congo. Why would we not have a hundred? Just like the, the way it, you know the mafia uh, has done Italy. It's done it very well. I mean, they talk about mafia movies since the 70s, 60s till now, and we don't get tired of it. In the same vein, uh, welcome back, peace. In the same vein, yeah. why? Aren't we, you know, able to tell all these stories that are clearly us? You understand? Yeah. Even our phone line, our 419, we should hug it. Is our okay, own I have a story for you people, in case you people are interested. Because I, I grew up in Kaduna State and I saw war. All those Sharia crises. So I have a story. If it's that one, we have a story. Because I'm just, sometimes it's just interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, peace yeah. is back. Yeah, but peace is back yeah. quickly because we ran out of she time. She needs to wrap it yeah, up quickly, for us. Yes. With, I, I, I always like to harp on her years of experience in yeah. the industry. She understands it better from the, even from the grassroots, really. <laughs> yeah. So um, how would you wrap up this conversation? Unfortunately, we don't have more time, but what would you say in a minute or two, um, following investment and those who want to invest and um, of what Chukuka has said as well? I think that, like he said, we must tell real stories because that's where the money is yeah. internationally. You know, um, I was very disappointed with the lack of support for the milkmaid in the Oscar run. Mm -hmm. And it just showed, um, sadly, that we don't understand the value of what we had with a film like that. Um, if anybody has money to invest, then structure it well so that at the end of the day, it's a story that crosses over. It's a story that um, can increase the dollars coming into the Nigerian film industry and not just staying local. So that's what I would say. And then for those that want to invest in the ecosystem in Nigeria, then in, invest in hubs where we have like writer's rooms, sound labs, studios, um, proper equipment uh, places. Like we don't have a, a professional customer hmm. warehouse in hmm. Lagos or in Asaba or in Enugu. I mean, that is a major thing that we can wow. have. And just so that Chuka knows, um, AY has done a film on the Almadres, and I think he's got something interesting coming out there. Yeah. So that's okay. something to look forward to. Um, I've, I saw the BTS on that, and I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited yeah. by it. Um, mm -hmm. And there are people really, really trying to make different stories at the moment. Absolutely. I saw the AYs. Um, I've been following up on, on social BTS. media. Yes. Okay. He went to Kaduna to actually film that movie. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Thank you so much. We ran out of time. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we have to do a part two. Please, we'd love to call you guys back again. I mean, this, this has been an interesting conversation. conversation. We had an amazing time. Thank you, Chukuka. Thank you, Peace, for your time. Thank you, Mori. I don't know if we lost Mori as well. <laughs> Thank you, Is um, LC. LC. All right, I so the networks, the networks are playing against you guys because it's raining. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> but thank you. We had an amazing time. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. From next week, we'll start telling you the companies that are available for internships so we can have more people to um, join. So if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, t keep um, watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. We don't make movies to make money. We make money to make more movies. I hope Nigerian producers are hearing this. <laughs> we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.